What's going on guys, this is Rob and we are back with Sabretooth War. And as always, if you need to get caught up, there'll be a playlist at the end of this video. So, as we know, up to this point, Sabretooth is on the hunt for a particular thing. What that thing is, we don't know, but the ending of this is crazy. So what this does here is this opens up with Wolverine effectively being duped, right? That's what we saw at the end of the last video, which was that Sabretooth had basically used the head of Quentin Quire, a super powerful telepath, in order to effectively trick the mind of Wolverine. What this means is that while Wolverine is literally doing what Sabretooth is telling him to do in order to attain this super secret weapon, whatever it happens to be, in the mind of Wolverine, they're on a Team X mission. Now, for those of you guys who don't know what that means, because it's probably one of the most important aspects of Wolverine's history, back when Wolverine, before he joined the X-Men, and even before he joined Alpha Flight, if memory serves me, Team X was like a Black Ops wet work team that operated through the CIA. These guys did everything, man. They toppled governments, they killed dictators, they went after business tycoons. Whoever their target was, they took that person out with extreme prejudice. And there was no limit, man. These guys would run into a bar and kill 40 people just to get to one guy. It was nuts, right? Team X was dope back in the day. <laughs> their stories were insane. But for Wolverine, he's just kind of on another mission again, quote unquote. And that's why you see these kind of dual comic book panels. On one side, it's what's actually happening. On the other side, it's what he's being tricked into believing is happening. Now, as for Sabretooth, they're on the mutant nation of Krakoa, which is now defunct, right? Ever since the events of Fall of X happened, mutants have kind of been scattered to the wind. So Krakoa isn't really occupied anymore, but there are still safeguards. Specifically, there were safeguards put there by Forge. Now, a lot of you guys are gaining familiarity with Forge, if for no other reason than through X-Men 97. Forge's power is that he's basically Tony Stark, but it's really what his power is. You take away his mutant ability and that guy's gonna fumble to set up an iPhone. But with his mutant power, that guy could build Iron Man suits just like Tony Stark could, presumably. I don't think we've ever actually seen him do it before. But the fact is, he's the one that basically built a lot of these safety measures into Krakoa to ensure that nobody could just show up at the island and ransack the place. But Wolverine's an exception, right? He's part of X-Force, the kind of Krakoan Black Ops team, right? The one that the X-Men send in when they can't go in there publicly. So he has access to everything in Krakoa, including whatever Forge has down there. But there are traps, and so they kind of make their way down into this place. But you get this really interesting conversation right, between Sabretooth and Wolverine, which shows really the mind of Sabretooth and how interesting he is, right? When Wolverine asks, who are these people, the response to Sabretooth doesn't matter. We killed in Nicaragua and we killed in Somalia and we killed in Indonesia. I could go on. We've killed, we kill because that's our job. Your life is a bullet and a bullet doesn't think. A bullet does not ask questions. A bullet makes a mess. And so what you get here, right, as the two of them are kind of descending down, is you have Quentin Choir, who's kind of observing all of this, right? And he literally kind of makes these series of comments where he starts to pick up on the fact that Sabretooth misses this. Now, that's not new to us, right? As the reading audience, we've seen over the course of the last few videos that what really drives Sabretooth, as far as Wolverine is concerned, is the feeling of betrayal. Now, that feeling of betrayal is kind of capitalized on what was essentially already there. The whole birthday surprises thing, so like Sabretooth killing Wolverine's love interest every year on his birthday, whoever that love interest happens to be, that's been going on for eons and eons and eons. But the important thing is that the real betrayal with Wolverine came from when he effectively left, right? As far as Team X went, right, they were kind of the precursor to Weapon X, that because of the fact that they were deemed so effective, they were brought into the Weapon X project and then kind of continued their missions, but they would get memory wipes and stuff like that. So they would always forget who they were, what their actual past was. It was during his time in Weapon X that Wolverine had adamantium bonded to his skeleton. And you guys know the drill, right? Most of you guys know all this stuff. It's one of the most interesting aspects of Wolverine's history. But eventually when Wolverine escaped and then defected, he took off to Alpha Flight and then eventually joined the X-Men. And so because of the fact that he essentially left Sabretooth behind 
and never looked back. Sabretooth has always kind of carried that feeling of betrayal from Wolverine, and that's what drives him, right? When you get below it all, that's really what drives him. So we're really gonna see these interesting conversations and statements from Sabretooth as he's going through and getting Wolverine to basically kill everybody, <laughs> right? But Quentin Quire picks up on this and he's like, you kind of miss this in a sort of nostalgia way, right? You're nostalgic for the time when you and Wolverine would go on these missions with Team X and just slaughter people. It was more likely that Sabretooth is nostalgic for the bloodlust and the killing, more so than like his camaraderie with Wolverine, but that certainly plays a part of it. Now, as they make their way deeper, they end up coming across what are in effect these kind of coral missiles, right? Coral reef missiles. Now, here's what's important about this. Forge is only one part of the equation when it comes to Krakoa. Because Krakoa was a giant landmass and it was literally a sentient thinking being, it could communicate. Specifically, it did that through Cypher. But as far as like defense systems and in a lot of ways getting Krakoa to do things that they wanted, most of that would happen through Black Tom Cassidy. Now, Black Tom Cassidy, which you may or may not see in X-Men 97, but you definitely saw in the Banshee episodes in X-Men the Animated Series, he has the ability to manipulate plant life. And so a lot of these kind of defense systems that you see are rooted in like naturally occurring flora and fauna, right? Coral reef that fire missiles or projectiles or what have you. But again, as far as Wolverine is concerned, they're descending down into some place somewhere, Guatemala or whatever, and it's just like rebels that are firing missiles up at them, right? Business as usual, nothing too crazy here. Now, when they continue to make their way down as they're being caught in like seaweed, from Wolverine's perspective, they're in a tree and they're stuck in vines. They cut their way through, and that's basically it. It's cool to see this dual perspective. I don't really think I've seen this in Marvel Comics before, and I love the way that it's done. But they end up getting all the way down to the actual vault of Forge. Now, because Forge is an experimenter, a tinker, God only knows what's actually down here. Of course, we'll find out, but God only knows what's here. Any number of things could be here. It could be machinery or devices capable of controlling all the sentinels across the world, basically allowing Sabretooth to seize control of every sentinel in existence and using it against the entire mutant population and basically wiping out a combo of humans and mutants in one fell swoop, which Sabretooth is definitely intelligent enough to do. But what you also get here is you get this cool moment, right? Where you have Sabretooth making this comment about how him and Wolverine aren't really friends at all. He kind of rejects that. The reality is that they are. He really misses Wolverine's presence as like a comrade. And there's certainly like the camaraderie that was there that he misses. But he asked the question, he says, do you ever keep a tally of how many bodies you've dropped? You ever think of how for every one of the dead, there's a whole other network of destruction that you've created. That guy whose neck you slit, he never had kids who never had kids, who never had kids. That's a whole town of ghosts. Or that plane that you hacked the wing off, you didn't just send 50 people into the Atlantic, you ruined the lives of their parents and kids and siblings. It is an interesting thing because he's kind of taunting him. Now, Sabretooth is able to do this because Wolverine can't really respond. It's almost him just kind of using Wolverine's inability to literally respond to what he's saying is a kind of emotional outlet, right? Like you ever considered all the stuff that we've done and all the terrible things that have happened? The reality here is that Sabretooth seemingly feels guilt for the things that he's done. Now, this is kind of a shift, right? Like in its entirety, because Sabretooth as a character in Marvel Comics has historically never really felt guilty. Sabretooth has always been a super hardcore guy, right? Back in like the old school days when he first appeared in the Iron Fist comics, because he was originally an Iron Fist villain. A lot of you guys probably didn't know that, right? He was created in Iron Fist by Chris Claremont. But then when he was rolled over into the X-Men and he was fighting Wolverine, he was just like this feral, animalistic type beast that would just murder and pillage everything in his path. There was not one ounce of remorse in this guy's body. He was a pure, unadulterated psychopath. But then over the years, while Marvel has kind of changed his character and moved things around a little bit, at the end of the day, it all kind of came down to some less than interesting development for him. But what they're doing is sending him back to the way he was, albeit with seemingly a modified moral compass. So I would not say that Sabretooth is becoming a good guy, right? He's not going the way of Anakin Skywalker, but he is a guy who really just kind of looks back on the things he's done 
and in some ways recognizes the morality of it and recognizes that he's done terrible things. The question is, does he care? That's really the question here. And so once these systems of Forge make their move, right, these kind of sentinels, right, that start attacking them, of course, they're able to fend them off, but that leads to the exiles showing up. Now, these are not the exiles as a lot of you guys are traditionally familiar with, which is to say a team of varying superheroes from different universes who band together to defeat some threat in the multiverse. That's not what this is. The exiles are basically mutants that were at some point put down in the prison where Sabretooth was originally held in the center of the island at the very beginning of this massive X-Men run. And then once they all escaped, they essentially turned against him, right? Because they realized how terrible he was and he was kind of torturing and tormenting them and whatnot. But when they arrive here on the scene, what they don't know is that Wolverine is being manipulated by Sabretooth. The other thing here is they don't really understand exactly what they're getting into. They had a taste of what Sabretooth was about. They had a general small inkling of what Sabretooth was capable of, but they never really grasped what this guy could do. And they learned the hard way because Toad, of course, is seemingly one of the guys who's familiar enough with Sabretooth and stupidly, he just jumps in, goes to attack him and Sabretooth rips his arm right off, right? And just like throws him back while holding his arm. So Toad is out of commission. Now, because Quentin Quire, his power is basically being weaponized by Sabretooth, Sabretooth uses that ability to trick Wolverine into thinking these are the bad guys, right? It's very Old Man Logan-esque when Mysterio tricked Wolverine into killing the X-Men, right? It was a great story. We'll have a link to it in the description if you guys want to check it out. But the cool thing here is that Wolverine kills every single one of these guys or seemingly kills every single one of these guys. He attacks them all. But in the distraction, Quentin Quire uses his powers to free Wolverine's mind and to bring him back. And this is when you get the revelation because Wolverine looks around and sees what he's done, right? Killed these younger members. And in an age when mutants are just dying all over the place, any loss of a mutant life is really just one less person for the cause. It dwindles their numbers and it weakens them drastically. And so as he kind of looks around, it's like, oh my God, you know, what have I done? The response is Sabretooth, you done good. That's what you did. And he says, you got me in here and you got me Forge's deep powering gun, right? Now here's the thing, Forge has had this and it's not the first time we saw it. We saw it at the end of Inferno. If my memory serves me correctly, it's the gun they used on Maura McTaggart that took her powers away, right? The idea was every time she died, the universe would reset. Doesn't work that way anymore. So it's why they can kill her in the here and now and nothing would happen, right? She doesn't have any abilities anymore. Sabretooth immediately pulls this thing and shoots Wolverine with it. He's like, and now at long last, you're gonna stay dead. You're gonna get dead and stay that way. No more healing factor. You know what that means? You're about to be nothing but a bad memory. Now, here's the thing. Wolverine may not have a healing factor anymore, which means he's rapidly succumbing to the adamantium poisoning his body. That's what happens when his healing factor goes away. But Wolverine has one more ace up his sleeve. Wolverine, has his berserker rage. And what I'm curious about is whether or not that's going to manifest. With that being said, guys, we're gonna bring this to an end. Thank you all for watching. Click this playlist to get caught up and I will catch you all later. Peace.